Hey, hey, hey guys, Alex Vies Pelzer here, your voice manager, and I am super excited for you to join us for this particular episode. I'm going to tell you why. So she, me, her, this one right here, those that are listening, I am a woman. I know it's like, you know, that part. You're probably like, uh, we've been listening to you for like three years. We know <laughs> that you're a woman, but this is the thing. In building a business as a woman, it's, it has not always been easy. And as an introvert, as a single mother, when you start piling on all of the different titles and hats that I wear, man, it's women like the guests that I have on today that have paved the way for opportunities that I've been a part of, that have opened up dialogue that was necessary for me to be in the space that I'm in right now. Because when we think about her business, her journey, man, it goes so much deeper than just saying yes to being a speaker, yes to being an author, yes to being an entrepreneur. It's saying yes to being on a journey and Although I know where I'm trying to get to, I don't always know what the road is going to look like. So I'm super excited to bring you guys this episode. Oh my goodness. Hello, Miss Margo. Hello, Miss LTV's Pelzer. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for letting me be here. It is my pleasure. I, you know, I always love being able to look around. I, I love the space that I'm in. Can I tell y'all? Listen. I love the space I'm in. She is a fellow podcaster. I love the space I am in because she, we're connected on Facebook and I get to see her um, interact and do so many different things. And it's just like, wow, you, you look around and when you have other movers and shakers around you, come on now, you can't sit still. Yeah, yeah. You can't sit still. So Margo, introduce yourself to the Speak Easy podcast listeners and then we'll dive into today's topic. All right. First of all, hello, everybody. I am Margo Levette, uh, born and raised in the Midwest, but now I reside in sunny Southern California. After 26 years working in corporate, I said bye-bye. I quit that job. I took a year off and just really dove into podcasting, which is was my hobby, what I love. And out of that was birth her business, her voice, her conversation. It's uh, all about women and boomers in particular coming out of corporate. And now you want to become an author, an entrepreneur, a podcaster even. And that journey has taken me on to become a uh, instructor at the Podcast Academy Online. I believe that there is room for us females, men and women, boomers, who need to get into podcasting because we have a story, we have a business, we have life to share with others, but we want to learn how to podcast in an adult way. So that's Margot Levette in a nutshell. And, you know, it takes us right to that first instance of, you know, people are still, people are, are still finding out about podcasting. They're still finding out about the platform. But as business owners, I think business owners, speakers, authors, it doesn't matter what business you're in, you should be attached in some way, some some form to either doing interviews or hosting. What's your take on that? Oh, girl, I believe that. I'm getting feedback from this mic. I'm sorry. I believe that to the highest. And, and because people say, oh, isn't that like throwing spaghetti up against the wall? No, it's not. Visibility is visibility. And if you want to position yourself to be an expert, a master, no matter, I don't, the plumber has to be seen as a master. Wherever you are, you need to get before folks. Because it's a big world, but to, to really make the impact and make the money that you want to make, you have to get before people and people are going to get, get to know you by way of hosting a podcast or being a guest on shows such as the Speakeasy. So, you know what, LTVs, can I also add this? I think that a lot of people think that podcasting, oh, shoot, that's a lot of money and a lot of time. And I don't, I can't be on there trying to do a show every day, every week. I tell people, look at this thing again. Podcasting is really just getting files, audio files 
video files together and you're putting them in a place where people have access to them. So you don't have to do a weekly show. You don't have to do a daily show. Do something that is, do a podcast so that you, it goes out each month on your newsletter or it goes out when you are getting ready to do a, um, a lead generation or something like that. There's so many different ways we can podcast, but you're right, LTBs, we all better be podcasting. And, and look at where the world has taken us, digital. And some people are scrambling, but honey, we are here and we can help people get where they need to be. Oh, you better say that. I, I've seen so many people who are just like, I just don't know what direction to go in. I, I don't know where to turn. And I'm like, well, podcasts are still going strong. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. we're still going strong over on this side of the world. I'm just saying, but you know, it's, it opens up. And it, I think this is one of the most valuable things in business that um, no matter where you are in business, if you're just starting, if you're looking to scale your business, conversations matter. Yeah. Yeah, they, do. they matter big time. It gets back to that networking thing. You know, it gets back to uh, people getting to know, like, and trust you. We're not easy to getting up off of our email addresses these days. We're not, a lot of us are readers, but then our days get so piled up. You can be an author, but nobody's buying that book because they don't know who you are. What are you bringing? Why should I buy it? But if I hear you on a podcast or if I see you continually out there talking about your book, breaking it down chapter by chapter, letting me know who you are, what you're all about, and you showing up consistently, Oh man, now you're talking. I'm going to turn aside. It's like that, that burning bush thing. I'm going to turn aside and pay you some attention, you know? Most definitely. It puts you in that, are you Googleable? Yeah. Yeah. Are you Googleable? Because if you Google my name, any number of podcasts across the world will pop up with my name as a guest. My own podcast will pop up with my name as the host and what we fail to realize too is I know a lot of people think, oh, it's going to take a lot of time. But guess what? I've been on podcasts that were only nine minutes long. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's all in what you want to do and how you want to show up in this podcasting space. Yes. There's many, much leverage. Taylor, make it the way you want to because we're going into this industry as adults. We're going in intentionally, so make it work for you. You lay down the ground rules, but you know what, Elta Vise, I believe with all my heart, and I can only speak from my experience and from watching you consistently. If you go into this uh, podcasting thing, five minutes, two minutes, be consistent. Be, you know, if you're a guest, you, you say that you're going to be a guest and you are positioning yourself as an expert, be found consistently. And I, I'm speaking for myself because it took me a while to get to that. And, and let me ask you a question, Elta Vies. Do you think that people fail on consistency because we really kind of get afraid of our message and our own voice at times? You know, that thing kind of gets a little tricky and sneaks, sneaks up on you from time to time. What do you think about that? I think a big piece of it is comparison. Is I'm, 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 I know I hear my voice, but I'm comparing my voice to the next person. Ooh-wee. And so if they say something or do something that I'm like, oh, wow, that got them a lot of attention, that got them, you know, they said, they said, quote, unquote, air air quote, you guys, (laughs) they said they made six figures in a weekend, or they made, you know, a million, they got a a thousand people on their email list in 24 hours, we go, and then we try to tailor make our voice to sound like them and we were never meant to sound like anybody else that is so true we sell ourselves short and we we say i am enough but we have to really get to that place that we know that we are enough and we are sure about what we are bringing before people. You got to trust and believe after you've lived a certain amount of time, you have stories and there are incidents that have gone on that people need to hear. They want to hear like that woman that was born in 1920. There's a commercial now. She was born in 1920 and she was talking about how her mother was
was pregnant and it was hard, but she was born through a pan- pandemic. I think it was the influenza thing that was going through. That man, powerful. Every time I see it, I'm looking, I'm watching the commercial. I'm looking at the pictures. I'm listening to that woman. And I, if she better not write a book, you know, <laughs> I'm going to buy it. So it's that type of thing. We have to know that we are enough. Our stories were on our lives are always for somebody else. And that's a hard thing to, to own. It comes down to ownership. Oh, I'm, I'm talking. I'm a talker. But I believe these things. I, I've, I've lived through it. I know it. I'm 66 years old. And I tell you, I started her business, her voice, her conversation at age 61 with the understanding that I don't know everything but I hired the best coach that I could hire. Uh, my voice, I still have to find it, but doggone it, I'm getting started. And with training and with commitment, here we are at the going on four years. And I love it. I have absolutely fallen deep down, stopped down, slapped somebody in love with podcasting. Really have, you know? That, that brings up another point, is that a lot of times it goes back to what's my goal? What's my end goal? And when it's something that I love, I'm going to be, I'm going to be committed to. Mm -hmm. When it's something that's just supposed to make me money, I'm not as committed to it. Mm -hmm. So the love of podcasting, the love of speaking on stages, the love of writing books, it's a love, like there's a love, there's a passion there that you can't tell me nothing. I'm showing up regardless, okay? I'm showing up. It don't matter why, how I got to show up, where I got to show up, I'm going to get this thing done as opposed to, oh, well, how much money is it going to make me? Well, if that's always the thought process, then what happens when a COVID-19 occurs and we can't make the money that we were you know, making at one time, what happens when the cushion or the security blanket has been removed? And so you got to go into it and say, am I doing this out of a love or a passion for it? If I'm not, I've really got to make that distinction ahead of time. So that way I don't find myself going down this journey. And then six years down the line, I'm stressed out in a field that I don't even want to be in. Mm -hmm. You saying something, Alta V's, and that is exactly how people. That that's why we say can make make the blanket statement that podcasting is for every industry because if you are in it and you really love it, you're going to bring that to that podcast that you are hosting. You're going to bring that energy and synergy, and that love is going to ooze out when you are on an interview. So don't dread podcasting, embrace it as a tool, as a something that you can use in ex- a further expression of what you already love. So that's how we have to look upon that. Don't look upon it. If, if your LTV is right, chasing that dollar, man, that's going to burn you out quick. That, that's what's going on in corporate America. That's good, what's going on in the work world now. Having to be there, accountable, chasing that dollar. But when you are released to do what you love, it's a different scenario. But you still need to let people still need to know who you are, why you're doing what you're doing. And when you discover all of that, then, man, you're running. And somebody better not give you a mic. Somebody better not give you an opportunity to get on a podcast. Somebody better not teach you how to podcast. Man, you all up in there with two left feet. If it takes you a year to learn how to do it, oh, well, I'm in it to win it. You know? So you make a very wonderful point there. Awesome point. Now, one of the questions I ask everybody that comes on is, have you had any blunders that you can look back now and say, okay, maybe that wasn't the best option or choice in this journey that you've been on um, with podcasting? Wow. A biggest blunder. Oh, I've made a lot of them. (laughs) What is the most outstanding? The biggest blunder. The biggest blunder that I made was when I went against my gut. And what I always know to do is to talk to a guest, at least reach out to them before we record. 
And I thought this person was, they, you know, they were talking about they were going to be in the 2020 presidential race and uh, they, their descendants were uh, from Thomas Jefferson. And oh my God, I was just intrigued. I was brought into the story and I'm getting the scoop because I think podcasters, I know podcasters, we are really our quasi journalists, you know, so I'm getting the scoop on this lady. I want to hear, honey. We got on this, and she got to talking about some stuff, and it was like, where the heck are you going? There was us bees. It was so bad. It was so patchy until I could even farm that piece out to have this edited out and that edited out, and and I thought, man, you you didn't do what you always do. So that was a valuable lesson. You know, if you don't follow that person on social media, don't just assume that you're going to get the scoop and this is going to be a good guest. You know, she, she, I, I think that she was operating from another planet. What can I say? <laughs> I'll kindly say that. I think I've had a couple of those. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Definitely an experience to be had because you look and you you think, um, oh man, you think that some of the people who are at a higher level are going to come in and they're just going to rock the mic. They just going to drop nuggets and gems and then they get there and you're like, okay, any moment now. <laughs> I think I can, I think I can. <laughs> I absolutely love that because yes, that has been, and and this is something, Speakeasy Podcast listeners, I want you to understand that we're we're talking about this because these are some of the things that go on behind the scenes uh, when we get guests. This is some of the stuff we, you know, goes on behind the scenes when we try to do like on the spot interviews. And I mean, we do a lot in this industry because when it comes to podcasting, I can do a podcast anywhere. All I need is one mic. (laughs) That's it. I can do one anywhere. And if we don't put ourselves in the right position, then you you can you'll have everybody and anybody coming to you and attempting to, you know, be on the show, but it's not always going to be what your guests need. And then it comes to a point where you're at a level at, okay, my guests need X, Y, and Z. My guests need this, but also what do my listeners need? My listeners need this, this, and this. My listeners, there's something that they're trying to move forward in, and I want to make sure that I give it to them with this episode. And if you don't have that mindset going in, you're just thinking about the guests, you can have the best guest on and have no downloads. It's happened. It has happened to me. And I think that when a person's just starting, you you are feeling your way around. But if you're... Um, so if you're going into podcast from a business sense, say, I'm, go- I'm doing this podcast because I want it to be a part of my newsletter every month. You know your, what your customers need. You, you have a better, to me, you have a better grasp of what they need, what they expect, you know, and uh, how you can serve it, serve it up to them. So especially if you are uh, podcasting and you have a business or if you're an author, oh, man. Nonfiction, self-development, you know what those folks want. So take that advantage point and podcast and, and be a guest from that vantage point. That's a very strong vantage point. Use it. Own it. Own it. Oh, my goodness. This episode is, like, uh, amazing. I absolutely love it. Margo, let them know. Let them know three things. Let them know the podcast. Let them know how they can find you online. And if they want to reach out to you for more information, let them know how they can reach you directly. All right. This has been fun. Before we close, thank you so very much, girl. You love podcasting. I love podcasting. We could talk about this for hours. But I want people to, I always send people over to my website. It's www.margolovett.com. That's where you'll, uh, up under... Let me see up under, oh my goodness, up under podcast. That's where all the podcasts are, even though we are on either, every major platform. But I send people there each and every week. There's a new episode there. 
uh, you can also email me. I'll give my email address, margo at margolevette.com. Email me, you know, reach out to me. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, if you want information about being a part of the Podcast Academy Online, it's podcast academyonline.com. It is a membership um, place where you can learn self-paced, learn how to podcast at your own pace. Uh, $19.99 a month if I'm okay, if it's okay for me to, because people are charging all kinds of prices. And I just want to teach people how to podcast like an adult, learn like an adult and podcast from the inside out. So um, I think I covered everything. My goodness, I absolutely love it. Speak Easy Podcast listeners, it doesn't matter what business you're in, what genre, what industry, it doesn't matter if you are someone who bakes cakes or someone who sews, it doesn't matter. Podcasting is a great way for you to reach your audience. Something that I'm always teaching people uh, when I do speak is, is that uh, there are 60 million people that know what podcasts are and that listen in. And one of the advantages of podcasts over live stream is that podcast listeners listen to the whole episode and they take action, a higher percentage of taking action, as opposed to them listening to three to 15 seconds of a video, unless they are a, um, a really, 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 really favorite <laughs> like they are a follower fan for real most of them uh check in on the video they may come back and catch the replay but they don't listen to the full on thing but when it comes to podcasting they listen to the full episode so you want to make sure that you're tapping into that vein it is definitely one that can move your needle forward you guys know that's what we're all about we're all about moving the needle forward so with that being said i'm super excited that you joined us for this episode come join the conversation bit.ly forward slash world voice community join the conversation let us know how this particular episode resonated with you why because guess what without the speak easy podcast listeners there would be no speak easy podcast and until next time guys i'm your host alex Vies. don't forget to press it out see ya <laughs>